It is great to have you on the Family Goals Podcast with David Pollock and Pastor Jay. I'm Joel and House, and on this podcast, we want to encourage you to grow closer to God, to strengthen your marriage, and to inspire your family to reach its highest potential. Today on the podcast, we discuss grief and loss and how to show up for your friends. Here's the conversation. Let's, uh, let's just talk about what's going on personally with you and your friend group. Uh, one of your best friends, wife, passed away uh, suddenly yeah. and uh, super sad, very tragic. And I uh, just wanted us to have an episode where we just just talk about that because part of life is suffering loss and part of life is going through things that we don't want to go through. And um, I was talking to Jeff, I was texting Jeff and and we were talking about foxhole friends. And I preach on this all the time, like yeah. the importance of small group, the importance of doing life together, the importance of having foxhole friends. And I said, man, you, you've got some real foxhole friends. And he, he sent me this beautiful text that said his, his, he was blessed. His wife is in heaven dancing with Jesus, and he has an army of people that are, that are holding him up. Well, and I think that's the, you know, listen, I, I I'd be a fool if I, if I could sit here and say that you, you, you're happy about it or excited about it and you know that, you know, God's in control. I mean, like, I, I know that. Um, but that doesn't mean it makes sense. And I, and I think, you know, I, I've, lost a, I've lost a grandparent or I've lost all my grandparents before, but I wasn't around them every day. And, it, and just so to lose somebody when you do life with them, you know, you're in church with them every Sunday. They're in your house every Sunday and you're doing small group and you – you do sports and all that stuff and just people that are an integral part. It just hits different. And, it, and it's, it, by the way, it makes you feel different for the future for how, other, how you talk to other people and how you do other people. But it's been fun to see. It's been fun to see the people with Jeff and, and the people show up. Like, and, um, and, and I think this is more people that are experiencing this and going through this. Like, you gave me the best advice ever because I'm sitting there next to the car with him and he, and he just found out. We're driving down the road, and I'm like, I don't have a clue what to say. And you said, don't worry about what you say. Just be there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the part you see people that you're just so many people just showing up and not knowing what to say, not knowing how to feel, but uh, knowing that he needs you there. And it's been uh, it's been really, really cool. But you talk about the small group, and you talk about friends, and you just – it doesn't make the pain go away, um, but it shows you the impact that your family made, and and that's kind of taking the positives and just showing up, doing whatever we can, however we can to to be there. Yeah, and just to give some context for those listeners who, who may not know, um, one of the couples in our church, uh, she was forty years old, suddenly passed away. She was out of town on a vacation. Twelve year old daughter eight-year-old son and it's just it's just devastating and after after you texted me I ended up calling you because I wasn't sure what happened like like did she make it did she not I didn't, I didn't know the and you said no she didn't make it and um Jeff's telling the kids right now and I thought and then I asked you well should I come over there and, and you said well let me call you back and um I never heard back from you, but everything in me said, go. I need to go. I need to, I need to be there. And uh, I pulled Jamie, our executive pastor, off the golf course. He was actually on the golf course, and I was like, hey, he, he offered to go with me, and I said, let's go. Jennifer wanted to go, but she, she was in the middle of something. And, um, but when I showed up over there, of course, you and, you and Lindsay were there, the cul-de-sac was full of cars there were people outside people inside I mean so many people were just were just showing up and how how was it for you being with him when he told the kids I mean everything you everything you think I mean it's just like it's it's probably the hardest part um but you know you know how cool it was and I say this because right away like the, their little girl, she's just a sweet little girl, and she's wise beyond her years, and she was like, well, she's in heaven with so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a true testament to them. 
and how they've how they've raised them and and what they believe and what they've poured into their kids that I mean they've 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 made up they've made it a priority and and they and and their kids know that and I think that makes it um that makes it special that makes it special for them it makes it easier for them you know I mean they they know exactly what their what their mommy believe and she just um you know y- y- things happen to people and and you know I think it's hard when you say great people but like just somebody like her that was just the light I mean just huge personality I mean just always smiling like you, you step out of their bathroom and they're uh you step out of their bathroom and it says choose joy mm-hmm. you know um you know i just i just think that uh you know laugh or, or you know all around the house and there's scriptures all around the house and um just a huge personality that everybody always rallied behind and loved because just so much light and love and, and leah you know my daughter put together like a little sticky note thing on her wall and it just you know said so many things about her and you're just like yeah Mm -hmm. like my 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 13 year old knows that like big hugs big smiles lots of laughs love life enjoyed it so much and just so many great things that that you know I know where she is and that makes things so much better but But for, would rather have her here? Well, hundred hundred percent. And you think about Jeff and the kids and and her parents. I mean, she she's obviously whole and in in heaven for all eternity. Um, but it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be. I mean, Jeff's gonna go through this range of emotions. Over the next, I mean, it's fresh right now. We're just we're just a couple of days out, and um, it's going to be weeks, months, years. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was talking to her mom. So when, when I went over to Jeff's house, I saw her parents there, and I had the opportunity to to go talk with them and and pray with them. And and then her her mom had a lot of questions for me, and I was sharing with her that this is not something you're going to get over. Like, you're you're not going to get over this, but God can get you through this. And there, there are some things that happen in life that you can't get over them, but, but God's grace is sufficient for us. Another thing I kept telling, telling Jeff is God's going to get you through this. God's grace is sufficient for you. When we are weak, he is strong. The other thing I shared with her mom is that when we have tragedy and difficult times happen in our lives, we have a choice. We can run to God, and we can run from God. And I've seen a lot, of, I mean, I've been in this situation, not, not this exact situation, a lot, but, I, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have shared with me their loss and their difficulties, and, and I've, seen it, I've seen people run from God. I've seen people blame God. I've seen people get mad at God. I've seen people walk away from the church. And I've seen other people respond completely different where they, they run to God and they run to small group and they run to church and they lean on their their fellowship and their, their Christian friends. And, and that's what I'm seeing Jeff, I mean, immediately doing. Yeah, and, and I think it's, I think it, whoever's out there, like it's, I th- also think it's okay to have pain and anger and questions. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think that's, I think that's fully okay. And I think that's fully normal. If you if you're if you're in a situation where you've lost somebody, and that I mean, it's something that um, those are emotions that you're gonna have. And and um, and I think Jeff went through that. But just talk, like talking to him and his, you know, he does he does his quiet time every morning, and he he has for years. And his faith has grown so much the last several years. It's been it's been unbelievable. I mean, he's, he's unrecognizable. And I think God's been preparing him, you know, and God's been strengthening him and getting him ready. Um, but, you know, that being said, like, Sunday and, and what the church did, like, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, and this is, you, you talk about doubt. Like, I walked in the church Sunday morning, and, and what we did at the church with Greystone is, it was the coolest thing ever. I mean, we just came in, we, we, pr- we did praise and worship songs, and it was just a, a, a basically a tribute to Jody and her life. And it was four times, five times, six times as packed as normal. 
there wasn't a car. We were parked in the grass in the front all the way out, like, and, and you know, being able to hug Jeff and, and just, like, I, and just before he walked in and just be like, look at all those cars, man. Mm. Like, you talk about a life well lived. Like, I mean, that's that says something about your girl. Well, there's never been that many people at the church. There's <sighs> never been that many cars. And he, even on some of those big student nights where the, you know, the cars are, but it was pretty cool because we, we were coming in. We, we were at the first service at the Loganville campus, and then we left, and, and we're getting there kind of right at 11. And you had Wit and uh, I think it was Benton out there parking cars. We, we've got, like, teenagers hey, parking hey, cars. Everyone serves, baby. <laughs> and, uh, but it was cool seeing Wit just kind of knowing, knowing his, yeah. what he's been through. And but we were we were parked way up there, way up there by the road, and then people were just filling in. We were parking cars everywhere. And then when I hugged Jeff, I mean Jeff, it, he is the face of our Oconee campus. And when when he texted me and told me I'm going to be at the front door greeting people, just like my Jody would want me to do, I got teary eyed when I read that text, and I thought, oh man, I'm I don't normally carry a handkerchief yeah. with me. But I definitely brought a handkerchief I mean, to church. We, that we day. talked about it. He's, he's, the, he's the face. He's the face of our church. And for him to be there in the toughest moment. And, and listen, just, just to give y'all a little, like, he, he, was, he was hurting. He was struggling. It was hard. But, like, he went to that service and, and he goes up to the cross, you know, while they're doing worship. And every single man in the building went and put hands on him. Every single, and, and, and you talk about men blubbering crying i mean ugly cried like you wouldn't imagine i mean it went from the floor to the stage all the way back and it was just it was powerful and you got the the, the women who were mourning you know sitting all together huddled up and jennifer was right there like um but the, the bible talks about grieving right and it talks about mourning and jesus wept right like i think we're going to and 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 it was so it was such a powerful deal like after that we went back to the house and so many people coming through you know showing support showing love and uh after that he hadn't had sat down in two days i mean i i, I mean the, the hardwood's gonna have you know tire tracks like just it's gonna be worn out because he's just been walking back and forth and he finally sat down and i was so excited that he sat down you know but i mean it was just for everybody to come out and support and everybody to come out and in a time like that, like when you got somebody going through something, just show up, you know, show up in, in support. But it just shows you what kind of lady she was. It shows you what kind of heart she had. And I mean, there's just, and, and we're going to do the service, you know, real soon. And, um, and I expect more of the same because that's the way she lived her life was just awesome and big and loved everybody. And just, a, she's just the best. She's yeah. the best. Well, Jody loved Jesus. She loved her church. She loved Greystone Church. She loved her small group. She loved her friends. She loved her family. And to me, it was a beautiful picture of the church, like the body of Christ. And I had people texting me from the Oconee campus saying that they they were sitting down with their kids last night saying, this is what the church is. This is this is how God intended the church to be. And, and you quoted the scripture that we we rejoice with those who rejoice, and we mourn with those who, who mourn. And we were doing a little bit of both yesterday because we're rejoicing that she's in heaven. We're rejoicing that she lived, a, lived an incredible life, that, that she's with Jesus. But the Lord also says uh, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So there's so many people that are brokenhearted. There's so many. Like, talk about being crushed in spirit. Um, and we, we saw that yesterday that, the hearts are broken, and it was an opportunity for people to to weep and to cry and to mourn and and to celebrate and to to pray. It was it was the church coming together, be, being being the body of Christ, and and loving on each other and caring for each other and, and wrapping our arms around around His family. Yeah, and, and you don't. Um, again, I, I've never I've never experienced it, so it was it's been a, it's been a ride. You know, it's been it's been some ups and downs, but. Um, you know, just being there, being able to celebrate, um, being able to to find the positives, to find the goods, 
Um, and then, but I think moving forward is the biggest key, and and that's that's what I'm, you know, because because I do know from from having some situations with folks like the room the room starts to quiet, mm -hmm. and, and the room starts to fade, and 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 life goes starts to go on for everybody, and that's and that's part of it, right? Um, but that's not going to happen with us, and that's not going to happen with our small group. And that's just not the way it is. Like we're all going to have, you know, a, a, a her sized hole in our heart. And, and, and we're, I think we're all going to make sure that we do everything we can with the kiddos and, and love on them and, and show up and get them where they need to go. And I mean, the, the, the just the thought processes of meal plans and lunches for the kids and all the things and, and rides and, and sports and all that stuff, man, like, you know, it's not, it has nothing to do with anything besides like, how can we help? How can we pour in? How can we serve? Um, I mean, I, if we got to go over there every day, we're going to go over there every day. I mean, that's just the way it is because cause it's going to take that. I mean, I, you know, you, you talk about losing somebody in your life that, I mean, you can you, you can lose friends, but you that's your, that's your best friend. That's your best half. Like, that's, a, that's not something you just, it's going to go away, you know, for him. And so we don't know what's, what it's going to look like, but I know it's going to look like a lot of showing up and, the kids seeing all that yesterday, a lot of the kids in the service seeing that yesterday, and um, you know, because everybody loves everybody loves them, all both of them. I mean, everybody loves all that family because of they they love everybody. They love everybody so big. They show up for everybody and everything, and they always have. You know, like that's just just the kind of people they are. So now the kind of people they are, we need to be and support and love and share with them. So I was so encouraged with you and Lindsay and and all your small group and other people in the church and uh, just the commitment that y'all had to be there. And I, I was so encouraged yesterday to see so many people just show up and just to be there. And Jesus said that the, the world will know that we're true disciples of Jesus Christ by the love that we have for one another. And loving on each other, loving on this family, and, and not only... And, and caring caring for because everybody's hurting oh, yeah. this is everybody loving on everybody I think if, if if an unbeliever was there or an unbeliever is from the outside looking in what what an incredible testimony to what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ it, it would have been impossible to be in the building and not feel it mm. so at the end of the service of course the the whole church I mean everybody, Three, four hundred people all huddled around. Uh, Jeff laid hands on him and his family, and and then uh, you prayed. And after that, I don't even know if this was planned, but the band, Brad and the band, go into gratitude, continue the worship. And so Jennifer and I, we're on the, we're on the kind of front and center, which normally we're not front and center, but that's just kind of the seats that were available. But we're we're raising our hands and we're worshiping and I look out out of the corner of my eye and I see Jeff with his hand raised and then you and Lindsay behind him. I was like, I about lost it. I couldn't even I couldn't even look over there to see because that's the it was a beautiful picture of we're mourning, we're hurting, but yet we're still worshiping Jesus. We're still grateful. And I think he he kind of let you know like it was all right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I think, like I said, I wasn't in the mood. I mean, I'll be honest. I just wasn't. Like, I want, I love praise and worship music. That's my favorite thing about church. But I, I was not in the mood Sunday morning. I, just, I don't I, think really anybody I, was. I wasn't. And, yeah. and when he did that, man, oh, God. Yeah. And, it, and it just, it's just, and, and, he, and he texted uh, me and Lindsay afterwards, and he just said, um, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, unbelievable, and he said, we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the moment you're just like, he, and he said, I could feel it. I could feel, the, he said, I could feel this Holy Spirit, and we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment where you just like, that's, there's a step, you know, and, and I'm not yeah. saying that step's not going to wind and turn, and we're, and we're going to, yeah. but, but like, to have that step was, was incredible. And, um, Listen, he, that, they, he doesn't deserve it, what happened to him. 
Like he doesn't des- right. he doesn't deserve it, and, and and neither do the kids. And and um, but his response, I think, is going to be something that teaches us all. I mean, that's going to teach. I mean, I'm I'm already blown away, you know, about how he's responded and how he's handled it. And I think it's going to impact. I think it's going to impact our whole community and everybody, everybody around. That when you watch somebody that can do that and raise his hands in the midst of turmoil, when everybody else can see the reason to be angry, can see the reason to be upset. And you're like, I still serve a great God. Like, I don't know that there's much that you can do that's more powerful than that. Well, I think it, the way he responded, it's inspiring to Christians. Like I was talking to several guys and they were like, I wouldn't have come to church today. I would have been at, been at home by myself, kind of, kind of wallowing in the mud, so to speak, kind of, kind of woe is me, but he's at church. He's standing at the front door greeting. He greeted every single person that walked into the church. And I think it's a testimony to the people who have fallen away from Christ. I mean, there's people in our community who have fallen out of church, fallen away from Christ. Something happened that they don't know why. Yeah. They've questioned, they've doubted, and then it's lead, led to them to leave the church. And maybe this brings them back to church. Maybe this brings them back to uh, a relationship with Christ. And, and then thirdly, you have the people that don't know Jesus. And may, maybe God uses this to bring them into a, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. No. Thank you for listening to this week's Family Goals podcast with David Pollock and Pastor Jay. The most encouraging thing about this whole situation is the way that Jeff and his family have run to God and found refuge in the church. The way the church rallied around him like an army. The bottom line is this. In times of trouble, run to God. Run to God, run to God, run to God. It's okay to be sad or to be in pain or to be angry. It's in our human nature. Even Jesus wept. God is always right there waiting for you. Run to the church, find that good community that's going to be there for you when times like these come. If you're someone who wants to be there for somebody or you don't know what to do or what to say, just show up, be present, and love on them. Find ways to serve the family, whether that's dinners or carpooling or praying for them. Just show up and be their friend. If you found this episode helpful, encouraging, or entertaining, please let us know by subscribing to the podcast or by writing a review. You can also reach us on Instagram and Twitter at Family Goals Pod. Thank you again for listening to the Family Goals Podcast, and we'll catch you next week.